There's an old folk tale that I love. It's a Jewish folk tale from the 1700s told by Jacob Ben Wolfkrantz, Magad of Dubno. And it begins with a beautiful, stunning diamond. Now, like many old stories and oral traditions that get told again and again, I've heard it told a number of ways. The one I know best begins with this diamond, which is the prized possession of a community of people, a town. Now, the townspeople are so proud of their diamond, they, they actually keep it on display in the center of town so that everybody can see it and enjoy it. But one day, the people wake up to find that it has a long, deep crack running down the middle of its length. And the people are shocked and heartbroken. They ask every jeweler they know, but each one says it cannot be fixed. To even try to fix it would be to risk breaking the diamond into several pieces. But then one day, a stranger, a stone cutter, comes to town. And they say they can fix it. They say they'll have to take the diamond back for two weeks to their shop. But they promise to return, and to return it better than ever. While the townspeople, as you can imagine, are weary, are wary. After all, this is a stranger. But their hope at having their treasure restored, their diamond restored, outweighs their fear, and they give the diamond to the stonecutter. Exactly 14 days later, the stonecutter returns and opens a bag and hands the diamond to one of the town elders. The elder looks at the diamond and is amazed. The stonecutter had not polished the crack away. Rather, they had carved a beautiful rose into the face of the diamond, using the crack as part of the stem leading to the flower. The elder held up the diamond to show the people of the town and said to the stonecutter, you have taken something that was cracked and broken and made it even more beautiful than it was before. As the poet and songwriter Leonard Cohen writes, there is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Now the metaphor of light is pretty important to us as Unitarian Universalists. The act of lighting the chalice our ritual the flame, a symbol of truth and justice, the divine spark, the inherent worth and dignity of every person, a beacon to guide our way. But the chalice, the symbol of our faith, is actually a combination of two symbols, the flame and the cup. The cup is the symbol of community of care and sustenance, of how we feed one another, nourish and strengthen one another in community. It is the cup that holds the light, the cup where the flame is tended. The cup is what we create when we reach out our hands and our spirits to one another, when we are out here holding hands, moving together. The cup is also what can break. To unlock the life-affirming, life-saving, life-sustaining power of this faith, the power of we, we need to remember that our cup needs our attention. For it is easy to hold up a light and declare that everyone is welcome. It is harder to build a place where everyone feels at home. 
Reverend Lauren asks us to consider what are you here for? And what do you place your trust? I am here for life. I am here for freedom. I am here for love. And I put my trust in the possibility that we hold to heal one another and to grow more courage and more love out of the communities that we build. And I am here, literally here, because Unitarian Universalism saved my life. When I was five years old, the ministry, the congregation, and two very special religious education teachers, shout out to all of our religious education teachers, they saved my life. Because when I was a kid, my family was falling apart. A more accurate word might be erupting. And when my home was not a place of safety or joy, the Unitarian Universalist congregation was. And those two religious education teachers created a space of music and song and unconditional love that healed, helped heal something in me, helped me see the light coming through the cracks gave me hope, and sowed seeds that led me into the journey of ministry and here with you today. But there's also a limitation in this story. An unspoken part of my story and experience is the ease with which I fit into that Unitarian Universalist community. from a white, middle-class, well-educated family, the ease with which I fit into that community. How many of you hold other stories? How many other stories have you heard? Have you lived yourself? Experiences where our communities have been harmful or exclusionary how many of you have come drawn by the light of Unitarian Universalism, drawn by those threads of love and freedom in our faith, drawn by our principles and theology, but not found a cup made to hold you? Made to hold all of us. It is easy to hold up a light and declare that everyone is welcome. It is harder to build a community where everyone feels a sense of home. Our cup needs work, my beloveds. But the good news is that this is not the end of the story. When that stone cutter looked at the diamond, they didn't just see the flaw. They saw in the brokenness the potential of the rose. The brokenness and the struggle for justice, equity, and inclusion in our congregation's mirrors. <coughs> mirrors, it is a reflection of the brokenness of our culture and society, a culture of domination and exploitation a culture of racism and patriarchy, white supremacy, and colonialism. It's all there in us. These are generational forces of culture and our country, generational forces of harm that live in every single one of us. They live in every single one of us, although the impact and losses and costs of these systems is not the same for every single one of us. You know, I can imagine if we were able to spend more time with those townspeople, that we would learn that some of them had seen cracks in that diamond all along. 
They, maybe no one listened to them, so caught up in the idea of the perfection of that diamond. But brokenness is not the end of the story. In some ways, it's just the beginning. There was a time when Unitarianism led some to think that the perfectibility of character, of virtues, of society was the path to salvation. But it was our universalist forebears who saw the brokenness in the world and loved it all the same, who saw how love could bring forth a rose from the cracks, who saw how love could help heal and make us strong. And that is the kind of love, the kind of religion that has the power to bring more wholeness, life, and freedom for us all. Now this path, this practice of love, of universalist love, involves risk. Just like the townspeople took a risk in trusting the stranger with the diamond. Don't you know in those stories, the stranger is always the voice of wisdom and the holy coming to guide the people. We have to risk to create that rose. What we are signing up to do together as Unitarian Universalists, how our faith is being called in this moment is no easy task. It's never been an easy task. To build a community that can be a cup, to nurture a love that burns so brightly and boldly it acts as a force for justice within our lives, our congregations, and our movement as a whole. This cup, would be a resilient community, a community of deep commitment and practice where we don't let go of one another because we know that letting go is not loving, and it is far too dangerous out here for that. A community where love and solidarity help us develop a greater capacity for community, a greater capacity for risk and courage, a greater capacity for radical listening, radical truth-telling and radical listening, a greater capacity for joy and vulnerability. This is the kind of love that can change the world, that can tend a flame strong enough to light up a movement for justice and peace, that can tend a flame bright enough that calls us all back to our humanity because we are living in such an inhumane, anti-human time. It's the love of Sunday school teachers offering refuge to children who need life-saving moments of unconditional joy and love for their healing. It's the love that opens our doors as sanctuaries to families whose lives are torn apart by our immigration policy. It's love that repairs and replaces a Black Lives Matter sign after a vandal rips it down. It's a love that has the courage to shut down jails and to put our bodies in the line of ice coming after our neighbors. It's a love that fights bathroom bills because we know they are an assault on trans people and on all of our bodily autonomy. A love that organizes rides state across state lines to help women get reproductive care and abortions when they need it. And a love that won't be silent. A love that will not rest. A love that will not stop until everyone is safe and free and whole. Oh, it is no small part, it is no small thing to be part of a faith tradition that, where our forebears offered safety on the Underground Railroad, where our contemporaries offered sanctuary to families under threat, and where each generation found their way to pass the light along. It is no small thing to be a part of this tradition, my friends. And there is a future for Unitarian Universalism where our communities reflect a spirit of compassion and solidarity, where we create space not just to bring our shared interests and intellects, but to bring our boldness, our brokenness, our joy and our vulnerability 
our trauma and our pain and our deep love. Communities that welcome all of our children and offer ministry to the needs of families today. Communities that gather and worship in ways that name fearlessly the conditions of our lives and the possibility that lives in the joy, the beauty, and the love that is within all of us as human beings. A future where we build a marginless center and where our communities have the skills, the language, the spiritual resources and respect to create places where not only is everyone welcome, but everyone can experience home. This is the community I dream of, that I need to be a part of for my own life, for my children's lives, for your lives, for the future of our humanity and our planet. I need this kind of community that makes room for the grief and the pain, as well as the courage and the love and the resiliency, that lives in the fullness of our tradition, in those, in those streams of freedom and love that connect us to the past and give us a future. May we be communities that nurture for and in all of us, every single one of us, a love that will not be silent, that will not rest, that will not stop, that will lift us up and move us forward until everyone is safe, until everyone is free, till everyone is whole. May it be so. Amen.